welcome to another session of Deep Sea Learning with Georgia Aquarium. My name is Diana Rodriguez, and today we're going to talk about the importance of studying animal behavior and utilizing ethogram studies. So why do we study animal behaviors? It's an important thing, and we do it for many, many reasons. The very first and most important thing is so that we can understand what the natural behaviors are of these animals. The second thing is so that we can appropriately care for these animals in human care. So we want to know if there are any differences in what they are doing, uh, their behaviors they're exhibiting, how their appearance uh, has changed or not, as well as any fluctuations in their dietary consumption. Any of these changes are an indication that something may be a little off and it should be a cause to go and look a little closer to make sure that our loved animals are well tended to. Now, another thing that we're going to look at is desensitization. What does that mean? That means that these animals, we want them to be used to having somebody check their eyes, check their ears, look at their paws, flippers, fins, etc. So this is normal and this is not something that is stressful to them. Here at Georgia Aquarium, our animal care staff work individually with the animals on a routine basis. Every time they work with the animals, they feed them, et cetera, it is considered a training and enrichment session as well as an opportunity for observation. So what does that mean? That means that they are paying attention to these, these behaviors, these appearances, et cetera, and they're keeping very important records. Why the records? Records are important because it helps to develop a baseline record of what their typical baseline behaviors are so that we can study them over time because observations are daily and ongoing throughout the course of their stay here in zoologic institutions. Now, how do we do this? How do we study these animals in human care? How do we study these animals in nature? There's actually a whole field of study that is associated with it, and that is called ethology. Ethology is the study of animal observations. How do you do that? I'm glad you asked. This is an example of an ethogram study. An ethogram study is something that is conducted where you have a list of typical behaviors for a specific species and you're noting it over time. Why do you do this? Well, you're gonna do this so that you take out the subjective, the subjective nature of that study. So you're going to note a specific animal for a recorded amount of time, every certain interval of time. So for the instance of this ethogram, this is every 30 seconds. You will note a behavior that you observe and you will check off each and every one of the behaviors. So of course, I'm going to pull in my favorite animal here at Georgia Aquarium, which is the Southern Sea Otter. I'm gonna ask you to conduct your own ethogram study with our Southern Sea Otters utilizing our webcams. Now, our webcams can be found on our public website, which is georgiaaquarium.org, and you'll look for the sea otter webcam. What are, you, what are the behaviors that you're going to be looking for? You're going to look to see if the sea otter is at rest or sleeping. Sea otter is a very active animal, but they will take power naps. Grooming is another behavior you should expect to see with a sea otter. Sea otter has a lot of hair that they must groom continuously, and you can see that throughout the day. Another expected behavior with all living things is feeding, and a sea otter is an Olympic champion when it comes to feeding. Another behavior that you can look for, especially on those cams, is to see, are they vocalizing? Swimming. Swimming is a trait of all sea otters, the marine mammal, and they are going to navigate their way around. And then the last behavior you're looking for is interaction. This means that two sea otters come together, whether for a second, whether for a little while, they are interacting with each other. Any type of contact between the animals counts as interaction. So are you ready? What you're going to do, again, is you're going to look for these behaviors that are exhibited and you're going to watch the webcam and every 30 seconds, you are going to put a check mark box in the first column to indicate which of these behaviors you see. 
If you see multiple behaviors at that time, put multiple check marks and then wait to the next 30 seconds. Then start again and again and again. Once you are all done, you're going to be able to calculate your totals and determine your averages. This is going to be helpful to you because next comes the analysis part of this project. You're going to be able to look at this and be able to predict, are you able to see this animal exhibiting one behavior more frequently than another? Is one behavior more scarce than another? Or is it seasonal or is it throughout the day? What do you think? Scientists have been doing this for a lot of years out in nature as well as in human care so that we can transfer that information to predictable patterns of behavior for animals and their management. Okay guys, this is gonna wrap up our activity for today. My Georgia teachers, your Georgia standards of excellence for your lesson plans are going to be SSPFR2 and your CTAE pathways are going to be AFNR VS16. Goodbye and thank you so much for joining us. Best fishes.